There's a one, two. Shit happens in there. Sometimes there's mistakes be made. Uh, I couldn't hear him uh, talking because of how the choke was on. My my head was on his body on this side and his arm was over here, so I couldn't hear him talking. And I'm not gonna just dangle a hand there, so I just put it down. And then when he checked, I gave him the thumbs up and looked right at him. I was like, hey man, fuck, I'm good. Stuff happens in life. Uh, people make mistakes and I'm not one to whine about shit. It happens. I mean, he's a hell of a ref. He just made a mistake. Uh, I, I wasn't choking because I was actually thinking I could just pick him up and slam him. Uh, but it felt like he was just wasting energy squeezing me when I wasn't getting choked. So I was just sat there and I guess I should have done the thumbs up a little earlier or something. I mean. So you weren't close to going out whatsoever? Not, no. And he was trying to, he was trying to relax himself, but I don't know any conscious person who just goes, I mean, right, this doesn't happen. So they tell you in the pre-fight room, if I'm saying protect yourself, protect yourself, protect yourself, you have to give me something. And, you know, he said he couldn't hear me, but it, there's definitely nothing, you know, my arm's here, so there's definitely nothing over that one ear. Considering the way it ended, would you be open to a rematch? Not really. I mean, I didn't really want to fight him in the first place. I like Robbie Lawler a lot. You know, what's the point? Uh, we just spoke to Robbie a few moments ago, yeah. and uh, he said that he wasn't anywhere close to, to passing out or, or tapping out. Uh, do you feel he would have been able to get out of that position? Uh, I mean, he wasn't getting out. It was just, could I squeeze him out for the other round or not? You know, I mean, I wasn't letting go of that, and I got a pretty tight squeeze. The quality, I guess, that I don't like to showcase in this sport, but I had to tonight, was just toughness, right? A lot of people, when they get slammed, they punch it hard by Robbie Lawler, they're saying, I'm fucking out of here. Or they'll roll over, they'll give up their back, and they'll get choked out. But that just wasn't going down like that. I was going to keep fighting and fighting and fighting uh, until I got what I wanted. You know, I, I beat a lot of ass in my day, you know, and I've also been knocked down and had to bounce back. So um, I can give you a million excuses on earth, but I can tell you right now that I was prepared, I was ready. Um, and sometimes you just have those fights when you go out there and it's like a badass dream. You want to punch hard, but you don't punch. You want to move forward, but you're stepping back. So I still believe I'm the greatest welterweight of all time. So now, my path is getting back and getting a belt. Some of the greatest champions have to face adversity and bounce back and win. So I'm looking to try to run that fight back. If I had to give him an attribute, his composure for a fighter who hadn't fought a long time. And he kept that composure. He stayed to the game plan. You know, he took his time. He was patient. And, um, you know, it just wasn't a good night for me. So he got my respect for winning the night. When you're on this stage, you can't have a bad night. I mean, you can have a bad sparring day. It's times like, you know, I've been open about this. I don't win every sparring day. And if I do, I'm training with the wrong people. <laughs> you know, it, it was times I lost a sparring day. And uh, I said, coach, we got to run that back tomorrow. And we do it again. But you can't have a bad night um, in the octagon. And uh, tonight I have one. She came in in a, in a wheelchair here and, and, and limped to, to the chair. So give us an idea of, of, of what's going on, what your status is. Man, um, I said I was coming for that Walter Way strap and there was nothing that was going to stop me from attaining that and achieving that. For a long, long time, I, I've been on one leg. I've been fighting fights on one leg. I, um, when I fought in the Ultimate Fighter finale, I had microfracture surgery. And that's usually an eight month recovery turnaround. I had to fight three months after that and I fought three months after that. And I had to train through that, with that. I've been on one leg the whole time and coming into this fight, I was in a boot all week. I fractured my left foot and I, I was in a boot. I was walking around in a boot, but nothing was gonna deter me from achieving what, what I've been, you know, what I've set out to achieve. I need a little bit of time to let these injuries heal so I can not just be 30%, so I can be 100% inside that cage. 
I'm sure you saw Colby Covington cage side. I mean, is that the right fight for you? Can I, I curse like up rematch. here? What's that? Can I curse up here? Of course you can. I want to fuck that guy up so bad. It, it, I can't be in a room with that guy. I can't wait to be healed up and, and, and really get to put my hands on him. You know what? That That's that's one I'm going to enjoy, brutalizing him. In, in my village, where I'm from, they're still not running water everywhere. People are still struggling to get clean water. So we're going to put something together. I have an excellent team, a great manager, and, and, and we're going to put something together. We're going to start a, an amazing foundation, and we're really going to change lives. Did you have running water when you were a kid there? We didn't have running water. Water we get from wells. Bring it over to the house, and you had to boil the water because you never know what, what, what parasites were in the water. So you had to boil it just in order to be able to cook, to wash your clothes, to shower, and things like that. And a lot of people are still suffering from, from waterborne you know, diseases like malaria is very common there. A lot of people are still suffering from those. And so this is just part of the problem. There's so many things that are the problem, but you know, we're gonna look to work together and, and create something to where we can make life better for, for everyone. I've been on one leg for years now. So being able to open up and use my kick would make me so much more dangerous. It, I mean, it wouldn't even be fair. disappointed I don't, I don't know man I don't know what happened uh, I did exactly what I told everyone I wasn't gonna do I I let John Jones sit back and be John Jones you know I I don't know I guess sometimes you just go in there it's not your night I guess but uh, my cardio held up so all you fucking idiots can stop talking about it uh, I mean that's really the only positive I can take from this man it's a, it's a whole fuck ton of negatives that's for sure Jones as good as you thought he was, or do you feel like maybe he wasn't as good in that you, you showed that he was overrated? No, I, that's a beatable man. I didn't walk out of there thinking, wow, he's a lot better than I thought. I'm not going to take anything away from him because, you know, he did a phenomenal job of doing what he had to do tonight. But that's, uh, I, don't, I don't have the feeling that's a guy that I can't beat. I didn't do anything I was supposed to do, and I still went, and I still was in there, you know? I mean, I mean uh, it wasn't like he ran right over me and, and, and made me look like I was, you know, I, I don't feel like I got embarrassed. I'll be back. John Jones and I will see each other again, that's for sure, because there's no one else in the entire fucking division that's gonna do anything about that. Uh, I, don't, I don't care who it is. There's no one else that's gonna stop me from getting back to John Jones. Right now, he's a clean fighter. He's long, he's hard to get to. Uh, he's, 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 I, he was harder to get to than I expected. He's, he's smart. He did a good job of uh, uh, playing his game. Anthony Smith was the most experienced person I've ever been in there against uh, with 70 fights under his belt. And, and he showed that experience. He was extremely durable. Um, he was extremely calm. I put him in a lot of positions where I felt most people would have freaked out. And he kept his composure. He did a really great job. The illegal knee was totally unintentional. Hats off to Anthony Smith for for having a lion heart. He was uh, he was tired. He had been hit with the kitchen sink, and I mean, I did an illegal blow, and he decided to allow the fight to continue. And I'm so proud of him for just just being a real warrior out there and, and continuing the fight. I've been doing a lot of boxing. I've been working on my hands extensively, my defense and my offense. And um, I wanted to open up that, that category in my game when I felt comfortable doing it. And I felt like towards the later rounds, I really got a, a beat on Anthony and what he was capable of, how fast he was, um, his level of punching power. And I just, honestly, I just felt more comfortable exchanging uh, in the later rounds with my hands. I figure if I'm gonna make the gamble, you might as well go extremely big. All right, go big or go home. And uh, a Brock Lesnar fight, I mean, extremely high risk and extremely high reward. I don't really see myself versus anyone. Um, 
that could bring in the numbers me and Brock could bring in.